A story a day. Oh, yeah, a story a day. I don't know if I've told this story before, but since the greatest, one of the greatest human beings who ever walked the planet turns 100 years old this week, I might as well tell you this story. That's right, my first ever encounter with Nelson Rohichlachla Mandela, the former prisoner turned president, spent 27 years in prison. By the way, um, when we were growing up, uh, all we knew about Mandela was that he was in prison. That's all we knew. Former freedom fighter who had been sentenced to life in prison back in 1964. And then on that February morning, February 11th, 1990, when he walked out of Victor Fester prison in Cape Town, the world got to see him for the very first time since he had entered prison. He had entered in his 40s. He came out at the age of 71. This was in 1990. Four years later, he had been elected the first ever black president in the multi-party elections in South Africa. And I tell you, what scene, what a sight in Pretoria that day as he took over the reins of power as president. And what he had said before, you know, he forgave all his prisoners. He forgave all those people who had tormented him all those years in prison on Robben Island. So then, three years later, 1997, I am in a place called Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Those days, the AU was known as the OAU, the Organization for African Unity. And he was present. He was going to, obviously, as president of South Africa, he was there. And we were all there as well, covering it. I was working for Reuters Television then. We we're all expecting two other heads of state. One was Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. He was said to be on his way, as well as uh, Sani Abacha of Nigeria. Those were the big headliners then. But of course, Madiba, always a great attraction. So he was there in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, and we just happened to be in the uh, in the conference center. And we asked his people, hey, can we interview the uh, Madiba? Can we have an interview? Because he's in town, you know. It's always great to have a sound bite from him. And they said, no problem. And we showed up and there he was in his villa. And we started asking him questions. And uh, the BBC guy went first, Mark, uh, Mark Dodd, I remember him. He went up first and then a couple of other people. And then I raised my hand and I said, Mr. President, Jeff Queen Anger, Rogers Television, can I ask you this? And I asked my question, I said, oh, going on, girl. oh, that sounds familiar. Are you from Kenya? And I said, yes, Mr. President, I'm Kenya. I said, oh, I knew some Koinangas when I was in the struggle. And I said, yes, my, uh, Mr. President, those are family members. Oh, you come from great chiefs, I see, great chiefs. So that's right then and there we set up a rapport. He and I, we just um, every time we met, he would just, um, he would just, remember, oh, the son of chiefs is here. Oh, it's good to see you. Fast forward, we're back in, uh, based now in South Africa, working for CNN, and every time uh, uh, Nelson Mandela had a press conference, we obviously we would cover it because, you know, he was a story. So one day, uh, we're there in Pretoria, and he looks at me, and there's a crowd, and I think there's a visiting heads of state, and he looks in the crowd, and he's always the icebreaker. Oh, Koinange, oh, the son of chiefs. Uh, how is uh, Madame? And I said, she's fine, she's good. Oh, any children, any grandchildren for Madiba? I said, no, not yet, Mr. President. And then he turned around and said, oh, looks like you're having difficulty, my son. Uh, would you like some help? <laughs> and the whole room would crack up, they would crack up and laugh. Uh, so fast forward again, 2007. My son is born uh, six months later, or eight months later, rather. Uh, we're getting ready to come back to Nairobi after a stint in Johannesburg and I call his office and I say hey uh, guys uh, we're about to leave you know, South Africa for the last time and uh, going back to Kenya and Matiba had once said if, if my wife ever gave birth to a boy or son a, a child we should bring him so that he could welcome him and sure enough uh, they said come tomorrow and we went the next day and uh, exactly at noon the old man shows up goes into his office we follow him through and uh, we got to introduce him to my son for the very first time. Eight-month-old Jamal got to meet this man. Of course, he had no clue who the man was, but here's the deal. Most children, when they were introduced to Madiba, they would scream and yell and shout because they don't know who this guy is, and their parents would insist, oh, let's take a picture. These kids are screaming and yelling. They have no clue. My son reached out to Madiba, and there's a photo. 
reached out and touched the man's chin and rubbed his hand on his chin. It's almost like he knew he was in the presence of greatness. And Madiba looked at him and said, Oh, the son of chiefs has brought me another chief. And just there and then, and that picture framed it right away. And he was eight months old and now he's almost 11 years old. And every time he looks at that picture and says, Papa, is that me? I said, yeah, that's you. He says, wow, I met Nelson Mandela. I said, yeah, you met the greatest man on the planet. He says, wow, wow, he's my grandfather, isn't he? I said, yeah, he's your grandfather. And, and then he shows it off to all the kids who come home. He's always showing off the picture of him and Madiba saying, yes, I met Madiba. I met Madiba. What a man. He would have been 100 years old later this week. And that's why President Bar former President Barack Obama is heading down to Johannesburg as part of the Mandela Lecture Series.